Hello there and welcome back to more Final Fan- Hello there and welcome back to more Final Fantasy VI. Last time we scaled the Cultist's Tower. I've been calling it Fanatic's Tower for like the longest time. I just- uh, I'm an American, I don't read. Anyways, uh, we scaled the Cultist's Tower and we obtained some very powerful items, including an Air Anchor for Edgar and the Soul of Thamasa, which allows our magic casters to cast two spells in one action. Today, on the other hand, we're going to be kind of focusing on the last big thing to do before we kind of begin our uh, wrapping up journey right before we begin to start our infiltration of Kefka's Tower. And in order to begin that, we need to head back over to Figaro Castle. Now, in the Cultist's Tower, there is a individual who will pay you, who will ask you for 100,000 gil for, for them to tell you about a secret that has a lot of treasure. And I'm here to tell you that you do not need to pay that man 100,000 gil because the internet exists. And the way to find this treasure is by going inside of Figaro Castle. Now, real quick, I have moved my party around a little bit. Terra is, well, you know, still around. You know her, you love her. Um, but Terra will be joining us on this adventure along with Edgar, Sabin, and Setzer. Now, Terra is no longer running the Reflect Ring, instead she's running the Soul of Thamasa, as she's going to be kind of playing a utility caster, uh, utilizing buffs and debuffs for the entire party, because she can cast two of them at once. Edgar is going to be running the Jump build with the Holy Lance. Now, he still has a decent amount of strength for me to rely on his tools if needed, but for the most part, he's going to be our Jump Man. Sabin is Sabin. And then Setzer is going to be running the Fixed Dice with a Ribbon and a Larm Earring. Ribbon is mostly there to just keep him from getting hit by any status ailments, so he is ready to play support if need be. And the Alarm Earring is to make sure we don't get any encounters. Now, how do we find this treasure, you may ask? Well, we need to go down into our little engine room here and talk to the old man. And let's go back to the deserts by Figaro. Well, South Figaro, at least. Ugh. Bye-bye, Falcon. I'll see you maybe at the end of this episode. Down we go. This stratum's unusually rough. We seem to be catching on something. Uh, sure, let's go ahead and just stop here. Instead of uh, us working on the engines, let's go ahead and see what's going on beneath the waves here in Figaro Castle. Now, in order to find this next location... Hey, do you have something to say? Uh... <laughs> No, he doesn't. If we want to find the actual location, we need to go into the secret area within the jail cells. And this leads us to... Cave to the Ancient Castle. Yep, we have an entire secret, completely optional dungeon for us to explore here beneath the waves of Figaro Castle. Now, there are quite a few treasure chests here. I'm going to be kind of just navigating this... Uh, fairly carefully, as the enemies here are very strong, which is why I've kind of left this, left this place for last in terms of what we're going to be dealing with. Now, in terms of dual casting, I'm kind of just going to be chucking a bunch of standard, like, aura level spells at enemies. I'm going to go ahead and set up a Razor Gale with, uh, oh, hello, there's Reflect there. I messed up the Blitz! Uh, anyway, let's go ahead and use, uh, Auto Crossbow, maybe? Uh, bye bye. Uh, and then we can use a standard attack. I messed up the blitz on Saban. I accidentally pushed A a little too early. So I guess we can go ahead and have Terra just defend then. We have a lot of evasion on this team, so we shouldn't be running into too many issues when it comes to damage. Razor Gale should be doing most of our damage as well. Enemies here have a lot of HP, have a lot of defense, so we're just gonna be kind of hoping for the best. I guess I could just go ahead and start jumping and see what happens. Ooh, Razor Gale's not doing that much. Uh, I guess we can try Rising Phoenix then. Uh, enemies here have a lot of magic defense, so I mean, I'm not surprised that I'm not doing too much damage. I think Phoenix. Maybe I can do something something decent here? Ooh, yeah, no. It's it's tough. Thankfully, jumping is going to be very useful here. Especially if I can proc a holy, that'd be really good. Oh, no, didn't proc a holy. That's alright. We have Ed we have Setzer here who can do uh, uh, defense piercing damage anyways, so that's why I brought him along. That was definitely not the greatest fight, uh, introductory fight for this for this area. Um, but I do think there's only one other enemy for me to find here. There's also a Wing Edge, which is a boomerang-type weapon. Can't really do much with that, though. And a High Aether. Nice. 
We have three options for us to go down south here. Let's go ahead and take this option. That leads us to a treasure chest right here, which has a monster in the box. This is a very annoying Master Tonberry. He has a lot of different things he can do, but the main thing you need to watch out for is this barrier ship. I know, we just got done fighting the enemy with one of those, and now we have to fight another one. Let's do a Hastiga, and uh, let's do slow on Master Tonberry. Generally speaking, my main game my main game plan here is literally just going to be uh, bum-rushing him with attacks like Phantom Rush, uh, Fixed Ice, and Holy Lance jumps. Slow him down if need be. If he barrier shifts, that's fine, but generally speaking, we're going to have uh, Terra play Utility Caster here. Uh, we'll have her use Cura, and then I'll also go ahead and use... Um, I guess I could try and stop it as well. Ah, we got zero damage on there. We got no, no immunity for me. Uh, well, we got an immunity there, unfortunately. Which sucks, but that's okay. Barrier Shift is annoying to deal with. You technically can also use a Reflect Strategy here, but it isn't necessary. Because I'm... Oh, never mind. We can go back and jump. Maybe, uh... Uh... Holy Lance will work. Get a decent roll. Now we got a 1 in there. That's not going to do very much. Banner Rush is going to be very useful taking down this Master Tonberry. See what, what we can do with it. 9,999. Very strong damage. We're going to be kind of utilizing Terra to be reactionary here. You can auto battle here. Okay, since, uh, Edgar's not doing too much. Maybe he very shifts to, uh, to something else. Uh, we got a 1 again. Come on, Setzer. Oh, but it beat it. Oh, well, never mind then. Master Tonberry isn't all that bad, honestly. Just, I don't know. Bring Saban with Banner Rush. <laughs> I mean, he was doing most of the damage there. If Setzer got some decent high rolls, I would have been uh, would have been in a better shape there, but that's okay. For winning, we get the Gladius, which is quite nice. I've always called it the Gladius. I know that some people call it the Gladius, but I've always just called it the Gladius. But it's another dagger, which unfortunately we can't really take advantage of. At least most of us can't. I don't know if Terra can. No, she can. Uh, a dagger blessed with the power to smite evil foes. It's pretty useful. It gives a 10 evasion, which is very nice, but... I the enhancer is basically going to be glued to Terra on by this point, so uh, I'm just going to be worrying about maybe using that on you know, like Locke or something. But well, check this room. You can see that there's a, f there's a lot of winding roads here. I mean, it is a cave system, so obviously it makes sense for it to be kind of very windy. Death Tarot. That is for Setzer, actually. We take a look at this. Death Tarot. Cards that may cast death upon striking an enemy. Pretty useful. Allows allows Setzer to be kind of a physical attacker. Obviously, I don't really care for that much, because the Fixed Dice is just such a good weapon for him, and also just fits him super th uh, super well thematically, that I have no real, no real reason to use anything else on him. If we just bypass this wall a little bit, we can just walk right over. The, the, the ceiling sprite is tricking our eyes right there. We have a few other exits we could take as well. We have a southern exit, we have a western exit. Let's go ahead and take the southern one. Oh. Never mind. There's nothing there. I should probably be looking at the arrows on the menu that says, hey, this is an exit. This isn't an exit. Anyways, there's one final exit right there, but there are some treasure chests for us. Magicite Shard, which is very nice, and X Potion. I've actually not used any Magicite Shards just yet, but honestly, I haven't really seen a reason to use them just yet. We have a safe point here, which I think I actually am going to take advantage of. Uh, I've seen everyone's tents here, so we're just going to go ahead and heal up and move on. With that nice little rest done, we can move forward into the ancient castle proper. What is this place? It's an Esper attack! Let loose our Espers! This is the site of a thousand-year-old battle. Lord Odin is the only Esper left to us, as he recovered from his injuries. Does it matter? We have no other choice. We must leave this final battle in Odin's hands. A 
the city destroyed during the War of the Magi. Zen Tatsuken! Zen Tatsuken! Impressive. I never thought you'd be able to turn me to stone. There's a legend that tells of an ancient battle between the Esper Odin and a powerful magus. It took place in the Great Hall of the Castle. Well, I think we know exactly which one we're looking at. I gotta say, though, the, the aesthetics of the ancient castle... This is... Not my favorite dungeon, in terms of aesthetics, but it's easily my second favorite. I always like to imagine that we stumbled upon this huge castle within this big ravine underneath this cave system, and it's like, oh man, the dripping water from like potential like stalactites and whatnot, I'm, oh my goodness. I don't know. It's a, it's a personal favorite design, in, in my opinion, in terms of aesthetics, but... Enough oogling and ogling, we have a job to do. We have four different entrances for us here. We've got a few side entrances, and we've got a main one. Let's go ahead and take this rightmost path. That leads us to a treasure chest with the Punisher in it. Okay, well, we can go and take a look at what that is real quick. A rod that draws MP from its wielder to deal critical hits. Honestly speaking, this is okay. Um, If you want to make, like, Strago or... Maybe even, like, a realm of a decent attacker. That might be, not be a bad idea. It's kind of similar to the Lightbringer in that way. Anyway, there are some new enemies for us here. Unfortunately, none of these guys are new enemies. Uh, let's go ahead and see if we can use a uh, Flash to see if we can do some decent damage. Uh, other than that, though, I guess uh, Raging Fist is actually probably going to be our best bet for dealing with these guys. Because we can't really do that much to them. They don't have a lot of health, thankfully, but it's still fairly annoying. We got a very high roll there, 5,500 5, uh, damage. Let's see if Flash does any damage. No, not really. Okay, well then let's, uh, let's auto battle Phantom Rush, and then we can uh, having defense bypassing abilities being used here is probably the best bet. So we can set up a chainsaw. 1,800 damage. Chainsaw should kill here. Even if it doesn't do the instant kill. Yeah, there we go. Nice. Got the spell for Edgar, which is quite useful. If we go through this other entrance right here, we are given another treasure chest with a monster in a box. Now this monster in a box is a little bit different. The Samurai Soul. This enemy has a lot of very dangerous attacks. Honestly, my main idea here is to... One, slow it. Slow it down. I'm gonna go ahead and cure it. Oh, we didn't get the slow. That's unfortunate. This flame scroll is gonna be doing uh, some decent damage. The main idea here is we're gonna do Hastiga on everyone. And then if I can, I don't think I can. I don't think I have it. That's okay. Uh, we can go ahead and use Cura. Uh, and then we're just gonna go ahead and just do this normally. You can technically confuse this boss and have it uh, deal some pretty, uh, pretty decent damage to itself. There's also another idea you can use here, and that is to cast poison on it, as the poison will do quite a bit of damage to it. If we can't get it with Edgar, then I will use it with Terra, see if I can get that dual cast. Okay, no, we got it. Nice. I mean, other than that, we're kind of just going to be playing defensive here. We're going to be using the Phantom Rush Blitz. Oh, I'm not paying attention. The Samurai Soul's power increases. Uh, thankfully, we do have dual casts, so we can basically try to react to the damage that he's doing to us. And we can go ahead and maybe try to do like a Blizzaga or something. I don't know. We'll, we'll, we need to heal anyways. Uh, let's go ahead and use Edgar to jump. And we can auto battle for the rest of this. Okay, that the double Kira was definitely overkill healer. But to see that poison tick is just doing so much damage. There's Shockwave, which will do a decent amount of damage. 
we can go ahead and auto battle this now, I think. Let's see if the Holy Lands can drop down. Oh, no, never mind. Saban finishes off the encounter. There's some pretty decently powerful monster in a boxes here in the Ancient Castle. There's no, like, official boss battle here in this dungeon, so these guys kind of make up for that. Anyway, we obtained Float and the Master's Scroll. Now, the Master's Scroll is a very iconic relic. If you are playing the SNES version, I believe it is called The Offering. But, let's take a look at that Master's Scroll, shall we? Proof of a Warrior's Weapon Mastery allows the bearer to attack four times per turn. Now, normally, the Master Scroll has a bit of a drawback, where it will actually lower the amount of damage that, you're, you're, that you do per attack, um, with the added bonus of being able to attack four times per action. If you pair this with, like, the Genji Glove, if you have the Genji Glove and Master Scroll, then you're technically attacking eight times every single time you use the attack option. However, there are ways to bypass the damage-lowering effect of the Master Scroll, primarily by having weapons that don't scale off of attack, like the Fixed Dice. This isn't the full set, but this is pretty much how exactly I plan to utilize Setzer. Ribbon, Master Scroll, and he chucks four rounds of Fixed Dice on the enemy every single time he uses his action. A very, very powerful setup. And one that I, I mean, I'm obviously not unique for using that, but it is honestly my favorite way of utilizing the Master Scroll and keeping sets are at least somewhat viable. So I'm going to be using it that way. In terms of the enemies that are here, there are some new ones, but a lot of them are also just repeat enemies. So I'm not going to worry about encounters here for any longer. Though I might test out the uh, Master Scroll on something else. If you check in here in the center of the throne room, actually. Hello there, Odin. Odin crumbles, leaving behind a shard of magicite. So, a thousand years ago, Odin was turned to stone, and now he is in our pocket as a magicite. His ability is Zentetsuken, cuts down all enemies, causing instant death. 70 MP, there are occasions where Zentetsuken won't work, but for the most part, it's pretty consistent. Odin will only has one spell to teach us, Meteor. And at level up, will give us speed plus two, which is very, very useful. Meteor rains meteors down upon enemies for massive damage. It's 62 MP cost. It is non-elemental. It's very, very, very useful. However... I wouldn't fully recommend you equip Odin right now. I mean, you can, but for reasons I'll state in a little bit later, you might want to consider not doing that just yet. Anyways, let's take this leftmost path. This leads us to a the jail cell, it looks like. Can't really do much here, it looks, uh, unfortunately. Okay, well then we can move forward to maybe the rightmost room. This leads us to kind of a study area. There's a book encrusted with glittering gems. The Queen's Diary. I have fallen in love with Odin. It is a forbidden love, I know, but the flames of passion obey not rule or reason. Every time I think of that noble man, my heart flutters and fans the flames yet more. And who could rightfully fault it? When the fighting ends, I shall tell him. I must. Love between a human and an esper. Doesn't seem like uh, Majuin and... It doesn't seem like Terra's parents were the first ones to really spark that flame. It's really interesting to see the connections between humans and espers in this game. There's an exclamation point here for a brief moment. Oh, hello. Ooh, secret exit. Ooh, interesting. We'll take a look at that in a second. We go over here to the north end. We have gold hairpin and a blizzard orb. That blizzard orb is quite useful, at, for Umaru at least. And the gold hairpin is nice, of course, because it discounts magic. Uh, I'm not going to worry about that, though, just yet. Revisiting this hidden room right here. Let's go ahead and see what we got. The basement one. 
kind of like a long hallway here. We've got another dragon here. Though, I think for the time being, I am going to once again ignore it. Even the queen was turned to stone. From the stone, is that a tear? Odin's magicite surges with newfound power. Odin becomes Raiden. This replaces your Odin magicite. This is what I was kind of talking about. If you want to learn Meteor from Odin, then do not interact with the Queen at all. At least until you have the people that you want to have Meteor learn it. Because Odin is completely gone now and will become Raiden who has Shin Zantetsuken, cleaves all enemies in two, causing instant death. It will affect more enemies than, than the regular Zantetsuken, but it still has enemies that will just bypass it. Raiden will teach you quick, and a level up will give you speed plus two, just similar to Odin. Instead of learning Meteor, you'll learn quick. Quick is a very useful spell. It allows the target two actions each turn by stopping time for everyone else. This is one of my favorite spells in the entire game. It will be useful for many characters, especially if they have no real reason to use their MP on anything else. Quick is going to be used to kind of give them that extra push. Either way, though, other than the dragon, this is pretty much it for us here in the ancient castle. Now, there actually is an item I need to grab here, so I'll go ahead and look around for that. But I'm going to leave this dragon alone, as I have better plans for it later. I'm going to grab this item, wherever it may be, and then I guess I'll uh, see you back at the Falcon. I found the item. Exether, nice. All right, back to the Falcon. I gotta say, I really like the added lore of the War of the Magi, because other than just a few lines of dialogue throughout the game, there really wasn't much that we could glean about the War of the Magi, other than, you know, talking about the Warring Triad and whatnot. So being able to see at least a few events from the from the War of the Magi and seeing just how catastrophic it was. I mean, it literally sunk an entire kingdom underground. It's so, so much better at actually showing you the devastation that the world actually went through all those years ago. And it kind of makes you wonder if the world of balance that we knew was kind of a shell of its former self originally thanks to the original War of the Magi, and the world of ruin that we know now, right right here in the moment, is an even more ruined world than what was originally here. It's a cycle of destruction that doesn't seem to be stopping anytime soon. But we're going to try and stop it as best we can. And next time on Final Fantasy VI, we are going to be preparing ourselves for the inevitable final conflict with Kefka, at least starting that journey. First off, by defeating some of the very dangerous dragons that I've been skipping around, and taking on whatever is terrorizing the skies of the World of Ruin. So, with that said, I'll see you soon.